All right, all right. Ah. What's going on YouTube? It's Kevin and Mikkel. This is the last video of 2016 for Mikkel and I. I want to say thank you to everyone who has subscribed to our show, unsubscribed from our show, and still watch. Thank you to those that like our videos, share our videos, discuss our videos. Um, just thank y'all so much. There has been a lot going on in 2016. Um, I know damn well my phone didn't die on me when I have some notes and stuff that I wanted to talk about for 2016. Well, for me, I'm going to just start with, with me personally. And for my year 2016... Oh, wait, let me ask you a question. Are sure. We, is this a reflection video? Or are we, we can, going to talk about We're going to just talk about whatever. We can talk about whatever, talk about the things that happened this year, and just... Well, let's just start off by talking about Debbie Reynolds dying. Yes. <laughs> well, you could sit down. We were just talking about... You were talking about her the other day, because you know I didn't know her whole story. And, um, she just... Well, you all know that day. Debbie Reynolds, Carrie Fisher's mother, died yesterday at the age of 84. Apparently, she, um, what was uh, reported was that she had, uh reported having trouble of breathing and it kind of was reported earlier that early that maybe she had suffered um, a stroke. stroke. She was rushed to the hospital and her son um, said that his mom's last words, excuse me, was she wanted to be with Carrie. And it, it's just sad because you think of a double whammy like, you know, Carrie Fisher dying one day and then the very next day her mother died. And, you know, just... Uh, her family was just basically saying that, you know, they feel as though their mother basically died from a broken heart. Like, she really, really just could not bear and accept the fact that her daughter had just died 24 hours earlier. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just feel so bad, and I just, I don't know what it is, and I don't ever want to know what that feels like. So I can't even imagine what her family is going through right now, but I would definitely say that my prayers are definitely with um, them at this time especially Carrie's daughter um, and Carrie's brother you know just the whole entire family like just losing a sister a mother a grandmother that has to be hard for everybody so my prayers are definitely with them and it just goes to show you that you know when God is ready for you he will bring you back with him like there's no if ands or buts about it you know what I mean like it was her time, and God saw that. Before we saw it, He saw. It. He knew that the following day, I'm gonna bring her with, with me. So, it's just you know, it's 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 sad, but they both are now at peace, and they're at peace together. So, just you know, continue to pray for them. Continue to yeah, pray for that family. That's a double that's, whammy for that family. And then <laughs> today, it was announced that the man who invented the red cup. <laughs> Yes. Let the cop die. Oh my god, and let's let's not even tell me how many drunk nights I had drinking out those red plastic solo cups. That is like the party cup of forever. Of everybody. <laughs> Especially in the United States of America. I don't know if yes. they use them overseas. I'm sure they probably do, but in America, any party that has liquor and you see a red cup, that is a universal sign that there is liquor in that, that cup. cup. Okay. And not water or juice or soda, <laughs> but liquor. Yes. And that goes for any party. Yeah, and I liquor. make sure that I have those red cups. But I don't get the 16 ounce. <laughs> Gotta get the 8 ounce, okay? Because I don't need anybody drinking up all the damn liquor. But yeah, those red plastic cups. Right. Oh my God. And who would have, I didn't even think, like it's so funny, you don't even think like, wow, somebody... Not even thinking, wow, somebody actually invented those red cups and the person is actually still living. living. Like, yeah. wow, like it's crazy. Just like the guy who uh, came up with the uh, the Heimlich. Uh, the Heimlich maneuver. He died recently at 96. And I'm like, wow, I didn't even think, you know, like you just always see it. So in my mind, I never even thought like, who came up with this? Mm -hmm. And then the guy who created the uh, Big Mac from McDonald's, he died. Yes. So all these everybody died. 2016 is taking everybody. Okay, let me tell you something. Betty White. <laughs> <laughs> they said they got her on guard patrol. Okay. Making sure don't nobody touch now, or take her. there's a text message going around, you know, where it says somebody's texting Betty White saying, are you good, sis? And she writes back, I'm good. Just to let you all know, that was my text message. Because somebody tagged me in a picture today where they edited out oh, my she name and everything. <laughs> so y'all know. <laughs> <laughs> so it had to be somebody following me. Okay. Because my page is private. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. 
But I ain't, I, I, yeah, I ain't petty. I'm just letting y'all know. Somebody did that. Whoever did it was petty. I ain't petty, but y'all know who invented it. You know, whenever I take or do something, people always take it and run with it. Yes, 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 have several seats. Hey, why would you even say that? Have several. They take it and run with it. <laughs> but yeah, and I got the messages still on my phone if y'all don't believe me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? But anyway, yes. So Betty White, this guy started this GoFundMe page. Uh, which was out of, I think more so it was out of a joke. Some people kind of took it serious, thinking like, well, you know, don't he know that God is in control? And I'm thinking like, come on, like, I took it as a joke. Mm -hmm. But he started this kind of GoFundMe page to protect Betty White from 2016. And it has raised over 2000 Are you fucking kidding me? $2,000? I saw it on CNN. I wonder if they made them refund it back. But apparently, what he's no, what he's doing is he he let it be known that the money that's being raised will be donated to this theater, this local theater, I think in his hometown. That's oh, okay. To. So he did it for a good cause. Oh, yeah. That's how we all should know. It's it was just a joke. But some people that don't know how to joke around or have humor just was all on this oh well god is in control and like, who does he think he is how is money going to save betty white from dying it's like oh, come on. <laughs> it was a joke and apparently some of us didn't get the joke but i thought it was funny because the joke made it all the way to cnn so i was like oh shout out to that guy like yeah. because betty white is really a, a national treasure like people betty love. white cicely tyson yes. Penny labelle we got a bunch of them right. still Aretha Franklin. Yes, yes, yes. She's still shading that. Because I think that when I, I think, and I ain't jinxing nobody, but I think when that day comes that when Aretha Franklin goes, mm. I think she's gonna have a huge. Finish. Yes, like it's gonna be huge. She needs to be. They need to put her in Washington D.C. and take her a couple of places. And Aretha Franklin is the only person on this earth that has a title that nobody can claim. Now, some people claim. Sometimes the King of Rock or the Queen of Rock or this or that. Well, Michael Jackson too had that title of King of Pop. Can't nobody claim that. But Aretha Franklin as the Queen of Soul can't no other singer claim that. Mm -hmm. That is, when you hear Queen of Soul, you automatically think of Aretha Franklin. Franklin. And that's why she don't play. And that's why she don't play. When it comes to the Queen. To the Queen. Actually, she, yeah. Well, she wants to make sure. <laughs> she wants to make sure. <laughs> You don't put that soul. She was not playing. Yeah. She's sitting there. Who's the queen of what? The queen. Matthew was like, but well, wait a minute now. Right. Yeah. Everybody, everybody can be the queen. queen. Yeah. Anything. Right. Everybody can be the queen. Like, That's no. as long as you're not the queen <laughs> of soul. Okay? Okay. Oh, she was not having it. Um, then today we had a passing of a football player, and he passed away. I can't remember his name, um, but he passed away just on, on a family vacation. They said he collapsed. Mm. And he was only 39 years old, so please appreciate life. And like I told y'all on um, Tuesday's video, do whatever you can. Like, don't, because tomorrow's not promised to nobody. The next five minutes is not promised to you. The next 30 seconds are not promised to you. If there is something that you want to do in life, go ahead and do it. It's never too late to do it. And if you try to do it and you don't succeed, at least you tried, okay? So I just want y'all to, and that's even more and more motivating for me, because I got this fucking gold board on my wall and there's nothing there, as you can see. Why'd you move it from there to there? Because I just, I wanted to put it here, uh, but it's like, it's blank. Can I ask you a question? Uh-oh, don't, don't do it. Please don't do it. I don't, mean, this how'd you know I was going to do it? Because I know. I know you, bitch. Because no. he's going to find something. He's yeah. going to find something. Now, I was going to ask you, do you honestly <laughs> sleep on your bed? Yes. How? Because I can. Don't worry about you how. You don't sleep on it with that stuff on it, do you? No. Oh, oh that shit goes right on the floor. And knock it back. I got to get my life no. bed. bed. Listen, <laughs> it was clean, but... I gotta get my life together. It's not in order. When your when your room is not in order, your life is not in order. True. It's it's so much no. Y'all just understand it's so much going on with me, okay? I'm trying to get it together. There's a lot of things that I don't discuss and won't discuss, but I gotta get it the fuck together. I don't want okay? nothing on my bed. Yeah, but wait until some, when Sunday comes, this room will be in order because I'm not bringing in 2017 with a room like this. Lies. I will not. I, and why, why, January 2nd? <laughs> why can't you come in January 2nd? January 2nd? Watch. Watch, watch when you get in here. Uh-uh. No, I, I just can't. But, yeah, it's just too many. It's too many deaths going on. Tell people that you love them, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, 
just tell them that you love them. Hog them even tighter because you just never know. You could be driving a simple drive, someone a hit and run, and they pass away. Like mm -hmm. it's just too much. Like just pay attention to what's going on at all times. And um, I don't know what else. It's just like it's too many. Like I think the most shocking for me was Prince dying because we know they say he was sick and stuff. Mm -hmm. Then like the following week he was going. We lost Natalie Cole. We lost George Michael. We lost. We just lost so many. It's like too many to even sit here and try to name all the names because every time they go, first thing you think, like, oh my God, this is a legend. This is an icon. Like we know they gotta go, right. but why do they all have to go in this one year? This is the the the, the only year that I can think of where so many people pass away from music, television, um, film, uh, like by people behind the scenes, comedians. It's just, everybody is just checking out, and I don't even, whoever else go, they just have to go, it's their time. But uh, I don't even want to keep going on and on, but 2016, I think, like, the celebrity deaths, that has to be, like, the number one thing. Alan Thicke passed away, Florence Henderson from, uh, the Brady, from Bunch. The Brady Bunch. Oh, my God, it's just a lot of people, and, and let me tell you all this, do not wish death on people. Don't wish that. I don't care who you think may go or, or think should be next in line. Charlie Sheen. Do not wish death upon anybody. Because as fast as you wish death upon somebody, it can happen to you or somebody that's very close to you that you love. Don't be going around wishing death on people. Let me tell you something. Donald Trump. <laughs> He's been a lot of places, seen a lot of faces. Well, I just say this. <laughs> I don't wish death on him, but I do want him to go away. I'm going to get impeached. That's all. I want him to go away. I'm tired of hearing about him. <laughs> and you're going to hear about him for the next few years. The tweeter in chief. Yes. Because that's all he does is tweet. Yes. He tweets his feelings. He tweets 24 hours a day. I want to know when he's getting work done. And Don fucking Kings with an S. Did you see that? I saw Jack him last night. <laughs> Did you see him last night? <laughs> Same next to Donald Trump? With the flag? Yes. What is Why was he on? even there? He's not in his right state of mind, so I'm going to give him a pass. That is... <laughs> Donald Trump's number one coon, mm. Kanye West is number two. Mm, mm, mm. But Kanye might be on to something. You never know dealing with Kanye. He might have a, another plan in mind. And and it, it, you know, but I don't. I don't. Since we going to be quite uh, to be quite honest with you, Kevin, I don't care what Kanye West's plan is. I just want him and Donald Trump to find the nearest plane and go away. Oh my God. Well, that won't be happening with Donald Trump because in about twenty days he will be sworn in as. The next president of the United States of America. And since we're on this topic, the 2016 presidential election was horrible. Mm -hmm. it, it was a campaign that was based on race, a campaign that was based on fear, a campaign that was based on Hillary Clinton and her emails and Benghazi and what she was doing, what she was hiding. And then um, WikiLeaks, like, this is the first time that I ever remember, like, another country or, or somebody was just so into ruining our election with fake news, with real emails. It was just, this election was a hot ass mess. It was never really about the issues. It was always about pointing a finger. And I don't I don't know, I wish that Hillary Clinton would have won. Yes, she won the popular vote. And you know, a lot of people were upset with me on, on my decisions, on my thoughts of the Electoral College, but I really do like the Electoral College. Um, but anyway, this campaign was just terrible. It was just terrible, like every, like. But I could not stop watching CNN, MSNBC, Fox News. Like I was just on those channels because every day it was something going on from Donald Trump just talking about Mexicans to Ted Cruz to Marco Rubio to Bernie Sanders. Um, to them saying like the DNC was not really here for Bernie Sanders. It was just so much going on and I could not stop watching it. I couldn't, I, I just could not stop. I paid attention to everything. Donald Trump was very entertaining for me, but when he won, it didn't become entertaining anymore. No, but it was scary. Speaking of the hackings, you know today, President yes, Obama- Yes, you got 72 hours to get the fuck out. Out of here. For those of you that didn't hear the story, today President Obama took unprecedented, unprecedented steps to retaliate against alleged Russians' interference in the 2016 election. 
Um, now, I'm sure many of you have heard in the past month that um, even during the election, towards the latter months of the election, where it was said that Russians had hacked uh, the Democratic Party and including some of the Republicans as well, mm -hmm. um, during the election, and uh, Hillary Clinton had talked about it, Donald Trump had kind of like, uh, like, yeah, like tried to act like it didn't happen or whatever the case may be. Well, I think uh, I think it was either the, the FBI or the CIA. One of those agencies. The FBI said that the RNC wasn't hacked, but the CIA said yes. Yes, they, they were hacked. But they all came to the conclusion that Russians hacked and things were hacked. Yes. And so President Obama and these few past, past few weeks have been saying, listen, something's got to be done about this. Mm -hmm. Of course, Donald Trump is becoming very, very cozy with the president of Russia, Russia uh, Vladimir Putin. And he's kind of like been dismissing it, like, let's move on from that. He wants to move on because he wants to be chummy chummy with Russia. But President Obama said not so fast. So today the administration, the Obama administration described Russia's involvement as significant malicious cyber enabled activities and sanctioned six Russian individuals and five Russian entities, as well as ordering dozens of Russian diplomats to leave the country. This is the first time the names of Russian officials involved in the hacking have become public on the sanctions list. Obama said 35 Russian diplomats have been ordered to leave the country and two Russian compounds are being closed under Thursday's actions. He also went on to say Russia's cyber activities were intended to influence the election, erode faith in U.S. De democratic institutions, uh, so doubt about the integrity of our electoral process and undermine confidence in the institutions of the U.S. government. Um, these actions are unacceptable and will not be tolerated. Mm -hmm. So I feel like go President Obama. Yes. Something needs to be done. But I'm kind of afraid that once Trump takes office on January 20th, he's going to kind of like maybe invite them people back. Or, or just try to it's going to mysteriously go away. And I hope that Congress, including those Republicans in Congress... Those Republicans are over it. Yeah, they are. Mm -hmm. Lindsey Graham, Don, uh, John McCain have been on the news saying, listen, and we are over what happened. And they're siding with President Obama. And I just hope that these same Republicans, once Donald Trump takes office in January, they continue this fight to find out what's going on and... How we can find or throw the these way I off want them, the way they chased down Hillary Clinton for the past year and a half, I want them to do the same thing about this hack. And um, and Obama's doing all of this from Hawaii right now because y'all know he's on vacation. Mm -hmm. um, and Donald Trump is just acting like this was not a big deal. And then there, like it's kind of like he knows now mm -hmm. that Russia has something to do with it, but because he did all that talking, he don't want to come out and admit that yes, mm -hmm. this actually happened. But it did happen. Mm -hmm. And um, what I was going to say is that I feel I feel like we already, the United States already knew about this hacking going on, but they didn't want to sway anybody during, during the presidential election. I feel like they should have let it be known. If James Comey was out there releasing letters about Hillary Clinton, um, if they were saying that the DNC was hacked, you had WikiLeaks releasing shit every day, why not just say this is what's going on? And, and, and stop letting it be so suspicious. Just put it out there that this is what's going on and, and to America and we're not going to have this. Like Obama should have said something a long time ago. He should have been said something about this. But I do think it's good now. Like he got like three weeks left now. He wanted to kick them out. I say good. Let them go. They got to go. Get out of here. But I do hope that Donald Trump wakes up and realizes that this is America and we must protect America at all costs mm -hmm. and stop trying to be chummy with the Russians. I don't know what's going on. He got people tied into his cabinet that had ties with Russia. What is, I don't understand like what's so important with Russia. And of course, you know, Russia is over it. They've been talking to CNN, just talking shit about Obama on the news and everything. Listen, I'm just tired. I'm tired. I just want our country to get better. I'm just tired of like the racial divide that's going on. It's just, so much, so much going on in this country just from the, the the election process. You got Black Lives Matter versus Blue Lives Matters versus it's just just it's just chaotic here in America. Right now, it's kind of calmed down. It's the holiday season. You really don't really hear too much about 
cop violence and Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter, you hear more about um, Donald Trump's transition. Um, I just pray that next year, I, even though I pray, I do know that it's going to get a little worse before it gets better. Because now with Donald Trump going to be sworn in on January 20th, if he makes it the way things be going these days, um, people are going to be thinking that they could do say whatever they want and do whatever they want because now they're like, oh, I'm tired of being politically correct. So you think you can just call people niggas anytime you want to. And it, it's going to keep happening. People are going to be writing letters. People are going to be fighting people, chasing people. It's just going to be a mess. And with the cops, I hope that cops don't feel like they could just go off and just shoot and kill people because we, we've had enough of that this year, 2015, 14, 13. Like now it's like it's coming to the forefront. And I do hope that there is justice for Alton Sterling. A lot of people have forgotten about him this year. Mm -hmm. And it was passed over to the Justice Department two days after his death and we haven't heard anything. How long does it take to do an investigation on a video that we've seen for about 30 seconds? When they shot that man under that car. Like, what else are you investigating? What's taking so long to come up with a decision to charge this, these officers or not? With uh, Philando Castile, this man was killed in his car. You ask for ID, but when he reaches for the ID, you shoot and kill them. They shoot this man all up in his arm. Policing has to get better in this country with police officers need to get out into the community that they work in and get to know these people. Policing is never going to get better though if police are afraid, not afraid, but if police don't see them doing anything wrong. If the departments don't see that what they right. do is wrong, Absolutely right. it's never going to get better. Just like I posted this video today from a uh, uh, the episode of The View where Whoopi Goldberg was trying to let Jedediah know. Yes. When white people scream, oh, every time something happens, y'all always want to bring up the race card. Well, if y'all don't want to even admit that there's a problem, then nothing's ever going to be, nothing's ever going to get better. Mm -hmm. Because every time we bring it up, <clears throat> we kind of feel in the back of our minds, I don't even want to talk to you about it because all you want to say is, oh, well, it's the race card again. Y'all just like pulling the race card. Because y'all don't want to hear anything. That's the same thing with police departments. Until they figure, see that they, what it is that they do wrong. Mm -hmm. Not it is not what the public does wrong, but when they see what it is that they do wrong, then things will start to get better. That's something that we were taught as children. When you get in trouble in school, you can't always say, well, so-and-so was doing it too, or so-and-so did it. Because at some point, you're going to take responsibility for your own mm -hmm. actions. That's what, At least that's what my mother used to always tell me and my sister. Okay? My mother said, I don't care about what so-and-so did because so-and-so don't live in this house. Mm -hmm. So I don't care about what they did. I don't worry about what you did. That's all I have to say about it. Now, I just pray that, you know, it, it, we, can, we can all work with each other because now we got a president that most Americans did not vote for but we have to deal with the cards we are are handed with and I would say pray more pray more get closer to God even if you don't believe in God if if you believe in something pray if you don't then just do you I don't even want to read the comments but I don't believe okay yeah. that's fine that's fine do I, don't you? Hate, I don't care I just oh, I just hope that that's why I'm always <laughs> I just do hope and that it gets better. Shut up. <laughs> I just I just pray because it's just it's hard when we we are really getting to see what our previous generation went through in the fifties and sixties and beyond. Like you you keep fighting them. Like how many marches? How many protests? How many times must we burn our cities down for for cops to understand? And why aren't cops like I, I'm trying to understand? I want, when people get selected for the jury process, please, no stupid ass people on the jury. Like, they be seeing dumb people coming. A clear as day video with Walter Scott. What you say? This, they saw, they saw is, that girl coming? Yes. Boys Baby! Baby! Dumb, dumb, dumb. I don't ever want to see her face again. You can look at her hair and tell she don't care about herself. Getting on CNN with that black hair and that orange shit all up in it. Well, I didn't believe that he did it. It, it was in the pet peeve of the moment. They saw her. Dumb bitch. They saw her. She tried it. The yes, they, they said, said someone tells me. me. 
There's a dummy coming. Yeah. Oh, we'll we'll charge you for murdering or shooting at the three and friends, was, but we won't I charge you for Jordan Davis. I bet you don't like lawyers probably sat in the room and she came in that room and probably watched her every move. Yeah. Probably watched her try to figure out how she spell her name, <laughs> what she got to fill out. And probably say, yup, there she is. And then you had this That's Dexter Dorsey Montgomery. Oh, what is fear? How do I know if the officer fear for his life? He didn't say how I know if the officer fear for his life. Like, do you believe that the officer fear was in fear for his life? He wanted to talk about what is fear. Bitch, don't get on TV looking for a book deal, looking for somebody to find you and discover you. No. You were on a jury, and your job, and you were the foreman, is to at least try to get everybody to come to a decision. And I don't understand how these people, first of all, stop picking 10 white people people for juries. White people do not understand what it's like <laughs> to be to black be, in America. Yes, and then to be shot and killed by a white cop. They don't understand those interactions but when they get pulled over, how fearful it is. I've never been pulled over because I don't drive. But but what I'm saying is, do you know how much fear probably goes into your mind when you get pulled over that, oh my God, I might reach for something, he might ask me to get for something Excellent. and to get shot. Go ahead. I've been pulled over. Do, have, you, have you been in I've fear? I've had fear. Now, I'm not going to sit here and lie and sugarcoat and say I get fearful every time, but mm -hmm. I have had fear, especially when I've been pulled over immediately after a, a, a killing has happened on TV because then you get nervous and go, oh shit. Because like you said, a lot of times when they, they ask you for your you know, license and registration, you got one over here, you got one over here, so then you reach in. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, I hope they don't think I'm reaching for something, this, that, and the third. Mm -hmm. But it does get a little nerve-wracking for me. And then I'm a black guy in America, so it's like, you really got to be careful. Yes. You know what I mean? You just have to be extra careful. You do. Yeah. So it is fearful. It, you know, and I know some black women out there. They probably be fearful. You know, get fearful. Yeah, especially if they buy themselves yeah. Yeah. at night. They right. be pulled over. Cause some male white cops like to talk that slick shit to black women when mm -hmm. they buy themselves. Hell, they like to talk to the black men, but they especially like to talk to the black women when they buy themselves. They like to get over on them. You know what yeah. I mean? And it's not right because they've been doing that for years. Maybe it's something cars be or a device something where they don't even know that they're being recorded. It's just recording. So they could be reported. Like I don't know. It's just terrible. It's just really. It's it's terrible here in this country. And you know it's bad when you got other countries letting their people know when you visit America, this is what you should do and don't do if you interact with the cops. That's how bad it is in America when it comes to dealing with police officers. It's terrible. Uh, let's go on to something else. Beyonce's impact on 2016, she made a big impact this year, and then she just went away. She just disappeared. I don't know where the fuck she at right now. <coughs> Excuse me. Get but me at the top of the year, <laughs> at the top of the year, did she, Beyonce performed at the Super Bowl? Did she perform at the, um, she didn't perform at the Grammys. Perform at the Grammys. But she was letting it be known that this new album is coming out. Some people were saying B6. Some are saying, oh, it's Lemonade, look at her with the Lemonade. And then all of a sudden, she released like a quick video saying, April something, Lemonade. And I'm like, okay, bitch, what, what is this on HBO? And I remember watching it. I wasn't really... We all was trying to like, bitch, what is going on, okay? That's just what it was. And then that same night, she released the album. And people just went crazy they lost their mind and then everybody I think they also found out like a tour was going on uh -huh. trying the to tour to came the about before that right before because people was mad like bitch I don't even know the words remember the Super Bowl after the Super Bowl is when the tour came about. yes you should tell them more than me yeah <laughs> you should <laughs> tell them more than me but what are we <laughs> telling the impact. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, because, yeah, after the right. Super Bowl, we found out about the tour. Right, but there was no and yeah, and yeah, So then everybody was like, well, where's this? So how are we going on the tour? Okay. But the tickets were selling. Okay. Well, that's Beyonce. With no music. Yeah. <laughs> it was. There was no music. And the tickets were selling. So we were and like, there was a full stadium tour. And we were like, how are we going to learn the songs <laughs> in five, three days? Well, bitch, they did it. But we did. Y'all be not. We did. Well, oh, anyway, too. listen. So, yeah, the impact <laughs> was there. Beyonce even made it on... The, the 2016 edition of Time mm -hmm. on the cover with uh, Prince, Donald Trump, Hillary Clinton, and Beyonce. And at the end it says Beyonce's year. Yes, well, <laughs> well, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
Beyonce really showed out and she showed us that not only can you be a, a powerful black woman, but you can be a powerful black woman and start a movement without even really having to say a word. Mm -hmm. You just start a movement by your by your music. You know what I mean? By, by your music. I don't even have to get up in front of the TV and say, I am Beyonce and I support Black Lives Matter or I'm Beyonce and I support this cause. Just show, and I, we talked about this before, just do what you do best. Mm -hmm. You better resonate with listeners with, by, through your music. Or through visuals. Or through visuals. So therefore, you gonna release formation. We're all going to get our lives off of formation. But then we're going to stop and think, wait a minute. I gotta watch this video again. Cause now I gotta really understand what she's saying, what she's talking about, and what she's showing us. And once we realized what she was saying, what she was talking about, and what she was showing us, that's when we all said, oh, I get it now. Beyonce is showing us that she is pro this and pro that without actually having to say it. She's showing us through her work. And it worked for her. How did it work for her? Because it got all white people angry and upset oh, that, was that when terrible. she performed at the Super Bowl, people were trying to boycott her. They were talking about boycotting this and boycotting that to the point where the, the Nation of Islam said, well, they won't protect the police you don't will. protect her. <laughs> when she starts her tour, we won't protect her. <laughs> we won't protect her. <laughs> Didn't Louis Farrakhan say it? He said that sure they don't did. protect her. We won't protect her. That's how big of an impact Beyonce had. She had that impact that people, our police department in Florida was like, we ain't protecting her when they come here for her to, for the start of her show. And the Nation of Islam said, mm -mm -mm. guess what? Y'all ain't got to protect her because we will. Well, it didn't have to get to that point. But look at how her doing that, her formation and the, 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 the message information started the ball rolling. So that all year long, people were singing Formation, we were listening to Formation, but we were now better understanding what it was that she was saying to us. And then it just started this whole big movement. It started this whole big movement. Yeah, and I loved how she was with the mothers of the slain victims. Yes. And, like, I wonder what those conversations are like. And she did it classy. Days. She did it in a classy way. She used them, she didn't use them to exploit them, she did it in a, even though there were some people out there trying to make it seem like she was exploiting them. But I love the fact that a few of the mothers came out and said, no, we were so honored that she came to us that we wanted to be a part of this. And the way she did it was such, it was in a classy way, in a classy dignified way where they were being honored. So that whenever somebody got killed, in, a black person got killed in this country, Throughout the summer while she was on tour, she always made sure she recognized that person on her tour. And I remember one city she was in, I think it was somewhere overseas, where she sang Halo. I think it was Halo. And she had all the all names, names of the people who had been killed by police brutality. Like, she made sure she said what she needed to say without actually saying anything. And that was what people, and I was so happy that people got it and they understood it. And to me, I felt like... Beyonce has grown. We've been doing this show for eight years and I've listened to you for eight years, well in the early part, talk about how you want her to become this, you want her to become that, and you don't want her. And I feel like everything you said, she became. I feel like everything you put out in the atmosphere, she became. She became that artist that didn't just booty pop, but she said, I have messages to tell. She became that artist that you no longer are going to look at me as Beyonce from Destiny's Child. You're going to look at me as Beyonce the businesswoman and the Beyonce the humanitarian. I, I, I love that she was able to do that. She was able to do that in a way that people were like, damn, wait, is that the same Beyonce from, ooh, boy, you looking like you like what you see? Like, is that the same Beyonce? And <laughs> like, that's really the same Beyonce, but she's grown into this woman. And I really can't wait to see what she has in store for us. Maybe not next year, but the year after next. Because we all know that when she goes quiet, it's because she's working. I'm, I'm ready. I hope Destiny's Child is working. Because they need to do I something. Hope so too. 20 years, next year would be 20 years. 20 years. They need to do something. I, I Let me text Michelle right now and say 20 years next year. <laughs> Tour and all. 20 years next year. And that's all I'm going to say. <laughs> so, yeah. Um... But then Beyonce album. This is the first album. This is the first her first album that I barely like listen to. But this shit got eight 
Grammys. And uh, eight, but I, not, eight, I think it's eight Grammys. Oh, the album. But yeah. I thought she was nominated for nine. What's the ninth one for? Did I say nine? No, you say eight. Yeah, eight Grammy nominations. I see she won eight Grammy. I meant to say eight Grammy nominations. Like, she did it big. Who, Beyonce? Yes. No, what I'm saying is I thought she was nominated for nine. Mm-mm. I think it was eight. Maybe it is eight. I thought it was nine. Know. Let me see. Let's check. Yeah. I don't think it's nine. I think it's eight. But that's still, if it's nine, Beyonce, Beyonce that's the, Grammy nominations. Uh uh but you need to talk to Siri, not no Google. No, I don't know if she won a Grammy Award for nominations 2017. Yeah. Beyonce did with eight. Total of nine. Oh. Total of nine nominations, including album of the year. Bitch, I thought it was eight. Oh, okay. Well, my bad. She's nominated for nine. That's still big, bitch. Yeah, that's, that's I mean, we just went off, but it's yeah. okay. Yeah, so, you know, she got the, the nominations. A lot of people is naming her, like, album, the best album of 2016. But also, like, this year for me, I really didn't buy a lot of music. I didn't. I just wasn't really, I wasn't really moved by music this year. But I hope that next year that all changes. Because I would like to get back to talking about people albums and talking about people songs and talking about people videos. I would like to get back into that, but I'm just not moved by this new music. But I tell y'all one thing, only had to listen to two songs on Bruno Mars' album. And I know his album is fantastic. I bought the album, haven't even listened to it in four. But next year, he's going to dominate Grammys. Um, Solange was, she was like the surprise hit of this year with her, um, with the release of her album, A Seat at the Table. Um, I bought Tweet album, which I loved. And it was good to see Tweet do her tour this year. Um, you know, she went to several cities, so it was good to see that. Um, Brandy gave us a little, a couple of snippets and stuff. I want Brandy to release an album, okay? I want to release an album. No more Whitney Houston versus Monica and all of that shit. Get Whitney Houston versus music. Monica. Well, not Whitney Houston versus Mon Monica, but who's the guardian angel, my guardian angel. Like, girl, that shit is tired, okay? Let's get to... The music. Let's get what was brought you to the game. Get to the music or get to the acting. One of one of the two, or both. Or do a whole album. Now, who's this movie. from? Brandy or Monica? Brandy. Monica. I don't. Let me tell you something. Monica album came and went. Nobody checked for Cold Red this year. <laughs> I want our artists to be checked for again. Like, just like everybody say, people need revamps. We need a revamp. Everybody need a goddamn revamp. We just gotta. Change the motherfucking game for the year. It's never too late to change. Never, never, never too late. But I want, I just want, I just want our faves to win. Jay Jackson. Our Harley. legends. Yes. And they still they're young. And yes, they're, they're very young. And we're in an era where people don't buy music no more because they'd rather download the shit than buy it. Mm -hmm. They'll listen to it, but they won't, you won't see the, uh, you won't see the, the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. Because they get it, they listen to it for free. And that's just not right. And Janet Jackson, I'm proud of your pregnancy. Uh, people are like, well, damn, well, how, we don't even know how far along Janet is. Like, sometimes you could be five or six months with a big-ass belly. I don't know how far along she is, but I just pray that she has a, health, a healthy, happy baby. Mm -hmm. And knowing Janet, she probably already had this baby and just laying up. And just like, bitch, she going to come back out with all this baby weight loss. And you know how she do. She lose weight in like two days. So... <laughs> And you know it's true. So, Jenna's going to be fine. I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about that. She probably already got this baby in children. I'm trying to tell y'all. You haven't seen anything or heard anything? Y'all know she got married and didn't tell y'all until months later. One time she was married for six years. And nobody, ten years and nobody know it. Until it was time for her to get a divorce. Yeah. So it's just like, <laughs> that's a secret to a woman. A lot say, of people need to be secret to a woman. Did I just say mm. Yeah. Did I just say that? Yes. She was married all the times. And then nobody even knew. She was. Nobody knew. <laughs> I remember it came on the Today Show. Janet Jackson's getting a divorce. But she kept, and why she kept her marriage secret and all of that stuff. Because y'all run your mouths and y'all want to see how long marriages last. Like I didn't see it for Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey. And I knew that was going to last too long. None of us did. Yeah. I, I honestly did not know that Beyonce and Jay-Z would last this long. Like it's just tough when you got celebrity couples getting together. But I'm glad they're making it work. But you, you, certain people last long, and I'm not just talking about Jay Z and Beyonce. I'm talking mm -hmm. about a lot of couples like uh, uh, Denzel and his wife. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, about to call him Coretta. Paulette. 
<laughs> Samuel L. Jackson and his wife will indeed. Yes. Those couples, they last long because they don't allow the media and the public to dictate what it is they do and how they do it as a couple. They also don't exploit their relationship like a lot of these people do Tiny and don't D. last. And then once they start exploiting their relationship, they all their businesses out there. Mm -hmm. Look how Beyonce revealed to us that she had had miscarriages in the past, but we knew nothing about that. Why? Because that was a private matter between her and her husband and whoever else in their family that they wanted to know that. That's how you should do it. You should not let the pub and don't listen to these people. Well, they celebrities and they put their lives out there so we should know. No, they put their artistry out there. And that's what it is that we watch for and that we pay for. I don't give a damn what Jay-Z or what Will and Jada or what Samuel and his wife or Denzel and their wife are doing in their house. That ain't none of my business because I wouldn't want them all in my business what I do in mine. And that's what people need to start remembering. That's why people like them last long because they don't exploit their relationships for a like or a retweet or a cover on people or a cover on this magazine or they don't break up just for ratings for their new show. Mm. Or have babies for a check. Well, come on, uh, China and uh, Ron. Hey, you <laughs> said it not me. <laughs> but that's she that's not a message you. about you, bitch. You, you know what I mean? Okay. Will and Jada didn't do that. Mm -hmm. Will and Jada. And we they, hear rumors. They, but yes, you don't we hear rumors, rumors, but that's just what they are. Rumors. rumors. Mm -hmm. Nobody really knows if Will and Jada uh, are, are, are swingers. I keep asking people, show me where they said that they were swingers and not where they said something else where you then alluded Interpret to them, yeah. interpreted to them being swingers. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because you can't catch me with the fucking okie doke. Mm -hmm. I want to hear out of their mouths that we are swingers and we like to have sex with different people. Not we are this and I do this and then you interpret it to, it to be that they are swingers. Mm -hmm. Okay? Because I can interpret that Kevin looks like Wesley Snipes simply by him saying, I'm black as shit. That don't mean he's Wesley fucking Snipes. Well, he's way darker than me anyway. This well, we know that, me. but you know, I'm just yeah, saying. Yeah, you know I what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two on Yeah. Two on mm. <laughs> That's You cool. could play, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, do a good job in drag. Taj Yeah, he does. Yeah, he does a good job. He just does a good job overall. Like, he's a very talented person. Yeah, I got coffee in my arm. But yeah, uh, so yeah, 2016, it was, it was, this, I think the deaths is what really took a lot of people mm -hmm. out. Yes. It, it really took a lot of people out. Um, and, and again, you know, it's just a lot. You really could not enjoy 2016 because of the presidential election, mm -hmm. because of the celebrity deaths. It was just, and then you got so much going on overseas. It's just like, it's just a lot. You got this war going on with Syria and people just being bombed out of their houses and airstrikes. It's just it's just a hot mess. Then you got people blowing up shit here. You got uh, shoot mass shootings. The Orlando um, I'm gonna get sad. The Orlando shooting. I still still get upset just thinking about that because you know I'm a club person. Well I, I, I'm kind of retiring a little bit because I can't really do a lot of stuff that I used to do. But it was just sad because you got all of those people that were in there drinking, having a really good time, just enjoying their Saturday night, and you got somebody coming up in there ruined it, just shooting people, killing people, just to take their lives. Even though they're already dead, he's shooting them just to make sure that they're dead. That's how much evil and hate he had in his heart. Mm -hmm. Talking about stop killing our people and all. This is not the way to get your point across. Killing does not does not help you get your point across. If you want to make a difference, then get out there and protest like everybody else. Or go go to City Hall and talk to your senators and things like that. And that's something I want y'all to do for 2017. Get to know who's your state representatives, who represents your district, who is your governor, who is this, you know, everything. Because... Because we already know who our president is. It's getting, it's going, bitch, it's going to get scary. It's going to get crazy. And if you don't like the way things are going, then you need to get to know what's going on with your, who, who represents you. And I'm glad that uh, John Kasich did not, that he vetoed that bill. It was like a um, six-week abortion bill. Heart, it's called the heartbeat, the heartbeat bill. And he vetoed it. Because some people don't even know that they're even pregnant after six weeks. Sometimes it takes a while. So they were saying if, if, the, if the 
the abortion doctor can detect the heartbeat that he can't perform the abortion. You can't get an abortion. You have to have that child or give it up for adoption. And and that's just not fair. I do think that there should be a term on when you mm -hmm. right. cannot get an abortion. And some states do have it. But uh, yeah, that was just abortion crazy. is such a sad and yes, sticky it is. situation. It really is. It's it's just sad. It's sad all around because it's just sad. Do you know like that's something else that could go away? Abortions with the Supreme Court. People was not thinking. We in in, in, mm -hmm. in the next four years, I think we have one vacant seat on the Supreme Court right now. In the next four years, we'll probably have at least maybe Three two or four, more. Two. Well, they are up there too. Yeah. Well, majority of them are. Mm -hmm. Clarence Thomas is leaving this cycle. Right? So now that's two. Mm -hmm. And you know he's probably half. And Bader Ginsburg is going to get out of there because she's already in her eighties. Mm -hmm. Like it's like. <laughs> the Supreme Court is going to be yeah, and you know Donald Trump is going to put Republicans in there so course. just imagine how many things they can reverse oh my god the yeah. people stay home they stay home <laughs> overall 2016 it was a good year for me um I I I I, I learned and I'm still learning and I am I'm just hoping that in 2017 that God will deliver me from some of the things that I was not able to be delivered from in 2016. Mm. And I want him to continue to work on me in a positive way. Mm -hmm. So that I won't have to put pause on nobody. Uh-oh. Just in a positive no, 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 no. way. No, you know, sometimes people, you know, and you should never allow people to take you there. But, you know, sometimes... We're flesh, and we do allow people to take us there. when well, we shouldn't, but a lot of times we do. But I just want to be delivered from any type of negativity that comes my way. I want to be like, like Mortal Kombat. Wow, you know what I mean? I just don't want to have to endure that in 2017. The negativity that does come my way in 2017, I hope it's very, very minimal. I don't want it to be... Yeah, I just don't want no social media... Fights. No more social media fights for me. 2016, that was a lot. It was a lot of negative things being said on both sides. I don't even want to get into that for 2017. Um, 2016, I have learned a lot. And I, at the end of this year, I think I learned even more because me forgetting about my body, me for mm -hmm. just forgetting about me, period, and always worrying about everybody else, I done fucked up myself mm -hmm. to the point where the doctor's like okay well now we have to do this um you, you need to start doing this and that and with me not taking care of myself i lost weight even though this is where i want to be i didn't want to be here that way mm -hmm. and now i'm going to have to lose a gallbladder next year they're going to take it out and then i really have to change the way i just live my life and i just want more i'm I've been to the point this year where it's kind of like I'm okay with things. I'm okay with how things are, but I've been afraid. Like, I've been stressed. I've, I've just been through a lot this year, and I'm still going through a lot, which I don't care to talk about everything. But I do, one thing I do hope is that my family becomes closer um, in 2017. I do hope that. This year has just been, you know, I, I still thank you guys. For helping my family get home. We've got back home, but it's not we haven't we still as a family haven't gotten back into um I would say like the swing of I think the, the swing of life for me. Or maybe I should speak for myself because I don't know I don't really speak to all of them about it. Yeah, I don't wanna get into the sad stuff, but 2016 it was not definitely not my best year. Not my best year. But I do hope to be closer with you guys, the viewers of The Scorpion Show, next year. I do want to do that, and I don't want to be concerned about what other people are doing, what other people are saying. And I hope that people continue to keep it away from me, because you guys have been doing a very good job of keeping it away from me. I just want to keep moving forward, and I only want the best for next year. And, I'm, and I don't have no choice but to accept the best. For next year and I want to become more closer to God too 
because that's something that I have not done in a long time. I can pray to him, but I want to worship in his house. I want to be in there and thank him for all that he's done for me. And even when I don't say thank you, God, or you know, I don't say thank you for waking me up, I just want to be closer. I want to be closer to him. And I want to get back to my roots. And that is something that my mom did teach us. And, you know, she can't force you to go when you're an adult. But as a child, that's something that I've always had. And I want to get close. I want to get closer. And at a time like this, where this world is going, we definitely need all to be closer to who we believe in. So, 2017, I hope it becomes a better year for myself, for you, for everybody. Um, I want to do things. I don't want to say what they are, but we need to do things for 2017. And we're going to do it because I'm going to make sure it gets done. You know what we need to do? That live show that no. we've never done. When I say you know what we need to do, just say what? What? Turn the heat off in this house. Nah. I am burning up. No, because if the heat is off, it gets cold in here real fast. Well, honey, <laughs> when I come, you need to turn it down. Bitch, if you take this off, you got on your work shirt, you got on your hoodie, you got on your hat. You know, I came here the other day and the heat was on 82 degrees. Mm -hmm. I said, hello? Hello? So I turned it down to 70. What? So you know your mother, I'm in the basement. I hear your mom upstairs screaming. I'm like, what the hell is screaming for? It? So of course me, I'm the one that goes upstairs. So I say, what you screaming for? Because you know I think I live here. I say, what you screaming for? Who got the back door open? So the back door was open. Jeremy had opened the back door because he was hot too. And he was like, we need to air this, let the some air come. So I said, well, Jeremy opened the back door because it was really hot in here. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. <laughs> the heat was on 75. I said the heat was on 82, and I turned it down to 70. Oh, it was. I said, yes, it was. <laughs> it be, it's, sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's hot. I said keep it like at 78. It probably is 82. Yes. I was like, girl, what are you going to do? Kill us? <laughs> she told me, hello. Why is the back door open? Oh, because it's hot and here. And then when you open the door, it gets cold in the living room real fast. Like, but sometimes yeah, she started feeling the cold air. Yeah, she, she definitely. Anytime you open the door, oh, she gets real cold. Oh my god! Mm -hmm. I'm like, you need your special. You need a special. You blanket. need a blanket. You need a special blanket. She needs one of them heating blankets yeah. that my grandma used to have back in the day. I ain't see one of them here. Do yeah. they still make them? I wouldn't even. Put, I wouldn't attach them to the damn wall. <laughs> I wouldn't attach them Bitch, to me. I already had one fire. I don't need another fucking with a heating blanket. No, none of them heaters that you plug in. None of that. Me Stay too, away so. from that. Miss Bill used to have one. She used to, she used to have a pink one too. And at the end of it, it had the, the, the turnstile on it with the cord, and you plug it up to the thing. And that you put it on you in the heat, would get going. That's old school. Mm -hmm. I'm sure they probably still make it, but I just remember like a lot of older women would have that. My grandmother truly did have. It. Yeah, but now they got them little heating things that you can use. But you really have to be careful because those are fire hazards. Them the little thing. Yeah. Them little fake. Um, Fireplace things. Or the, the oh yeah, I wouldn't put baby. one in the house. Listen, if my house ain't coming to the fireplace, I'm not putting no yeah. artificial one in there. Yeah, one time we had one. My mom had to take it back. And I said, I remember that. Why would you buy that from the fucking supermarket? Oh, I remember that because the court, the, the, the plug court, caught a fire. Yes, I remember that. You gotta be. And they tried to get for a hard way to go with returns. Yeah, I'm like bitch, I know you got yeah. it from here, so stop playing. My and mom I think Jeremy and somebody had to go down there. Yeah, and they be like, my mom couldn't hear every time, so right. why y'all trying to play her? Mm -hmm. Give her her fucking credit. <laughs> they saw her coming too. Yeah, don't do it. I'm talking about you. <laughs> they saw Bart. Sometimes she will. Yeah, sometimes she will. <laughs> they, they saw her. What you doing? And they probably saw her coming this in the car. <laughs> My house, don't tell me where I can uh -huh. Did you did I spend your money? <laughs> Excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. Baby. <laughs> they said, we got another one, y'all. <laughs> don't do it. <laughs> Wait a minute. Somebody wrote me. They said her the wrong way. Oh, that's my cousin. This is my cousin I found on um Ancestry. Oh really? Yeah, so I, yeah, that's another thing. Like I love Ancestry. That has taken up a lot of my night, just finding relatives and stuff like that. If you have not signed up to do Ancestry.com, I suggest that you do it if you want to do it. You can use my code. I'll find the video with the code because I don't know exactly where it is. But um, you can use the code and um, find some family members, learn your background, 
And I finished the Sell Your Cruise documentary. Oh, I was in here. Well, you told us. Yeah, I finished. No, 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 no you I said I on Instagram. I was in here crying. It was that good. But it was sad. 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 But I was crying. You know, it was it was a, it was a good story mm -hmm. of her life. And um, now I gotta get in march on to the Game of Thrones. I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna watch it. Now everybody's saying you need to watch How to Get Away with Murder. It has really been good. Mm -hmm. I don't know about that first season, mm -hmm. but these last two, three seasons, oh, it's good. How to Get Away with Murder is already on like three seasons. Mm -hmm. I remember when it first started. Yes. Damn, that was fast. I thought it was like the second season. So it's third season, and it come back in January next month. And have to have Nas come back next week. Like all my shows are coming back, and being Mary Jane comes back. Like everybody, all the TV is starting to get good again. Right after Christmas, after the New Year, is right back into the swing of things. So we gotta get it together. Um, well, TV is getting together, and um, I'm not really into that part no more. It's like I watch it just to watch it, but I don't get I've things that watch it. Oh my God, it's terrible. But I gotta, I'm gonna check out Star and see how that is. I fell asleep on it, on the on the premiere. But yeah, TV is looking good. Everything is everything is coming around, and we're gonna go. I yes, hope you guys have a healthy, happy, safe New Year's. Please get a designated driver. I don't want to hear about you on the news. How much family tweet me? Be safe. Get a designated driver. Get an Uber driver. You can use my code, Uber the Scorpion. You can use Mikel's code, Mikel. Oh yeah, that's right. No, M M Mikel M M A K A. M A K A E L M. You can use our codes. You can get free Uber rides. So every, tell everybody put one in their phone. They can get a free ride. Mm -hmm. So y'all can be safe getting wherever y'all want to go. You can drink all you want and have a damn Uber driver. But be careful because people will take advantage of you or can take advantage of you drinking. Um. So yeah, eat y'all glory greens. Eat y'all. What you call them beans? Oh my God, what are those beans? Yes, llama beans. Get them llama beans and, and get that money. So we're going to go. Get that money, honey. We'll see you guys next year. Be safe. Thank you all for watching us. Peace. Jesus. I'm starving. <laughs>